yeah good morning guys so in today's session what we will do we will try to understand a couple of basics related to public cloud platform in respect of what cloud you adopt uh, maybe azure or aws okay but especially i mean our concentration majorly into azure right so we will try to understand some of the terminologies that are mentioned in uh, az900 also we'll try to understand if yeah go ahead not able to hear you Rajesh if you want to speak out you can you can type a question later on okay so some of the t basic terminologies that they have mentioned in the 900 will try to understand in a high level and then we'll start off with the Azure basics especially okay so before I, I say we'll start off with the Azure basics let's try to understand respect of what customer you're supporting and from which geography you're supporting imagine you're working for one customer they have services deployed in somewhere in us okay i'm being offshore you're supporting from somewhere in india right so take xyz company i'll not mention any specific company names here okay they have their services hosted in somewhere in states and on your day-to-day -day, you're moving on to your office okay and you logged in from your office and you're trying to connect some of the services hosted in your hosted data center in us okay i want to understand what kind of prerequisites on what kind of network topology that needs to be followed on a high level if anyone can has any experience okay i can see most of the most of the network guys yesterday right you can give some inputs how how this setup can be done in order to allow people to log in from office on a day to day or most of the people now doing work from home okay how they are accessing their services everyone knows on the right right hand side bottom corner you'll have some vpn client you'll simply double click and you will provide username and password you'll connect it to the vpn and start working on it All right, i want to understand what kind of setup that it has in the back end anyone i have around one two three four five six seven people around in the bridge anyone has experience on networking i'm not talking about anything related to azure or anything related to any other public cloud. The basic day-to-day, -day, what people are doing. I want to understand how that is functioning. Because even if I adopt the public cloud, I, as far as the end user experience is concerned, it should be remain same. For that, I need to do certain things, right? So before we do the certain things, we'll just have to understand what it is. Satish or anyone? Rajesh, uh, Sunil, Sunil, you have some idea? Say that again, please. Okay, I'm saying I have a I have a data center in US and one of the one of the office in India. People are connecting from office or a home on a day to day. Okay, I want to understand how the backend connectivity is working. idea hello yeah. we'll be using hello. the vpn and where you uh your your uh your using sap routers all right okay bridging yeah. 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 yeah yeah and same right. uh, same same thing uh we will use vpn like uh we will if, if uh, we have office in india then we will uh just whitelist our public ip you are not audible can you a bit louder and come to come closer hello yeah you're audible but your voice is too lag so you can come yeah, can i am you... saying that uh, if i have office in india from where i have to access us uh, data center then i will uh, just wireless my public ip uh, of indian public ip at the us firewall and uh, that will solve our purpose that's called vpn and also we can use jump server as well okay 
So, if I, ha if I have a 500 people, yeah, 500 people walking here, what I need, I need to have some sort of firewall between two sides. I need to establish site to site VPN tunnel. Agree? Okay. And here I need to take a public internet connection from at least two vendors, maybe Geo and Airtel, redundancy. And on this side, I need to take a advantage of AT&T and the global partner and Orange. And these two, these two providers will give you some of the public IPs. You need to whitelist all these IPs over here. And these two vendors will give you some of the public IPs. You need to whitelist over here. Then it will, it will create, it will establish a secure, a secure tunnel in between these two. And you people start communicating via private channel. Right. Anyway, this, this we, we are going to test it in uh, network especially in VPN testing in Azure. But I want to understand a few things here. Why you want to move away from this data center to any other public cloud, like maybe AWS, maybe Azure. People are same, equipment is same. Then what is the reason behind moving away from traditional to public cloud? thoughts yeah the first thing is scalability issue and uh, the second thing hello yeah, yeah. i'm able to yeah and Go. the second thing is uh, like uh, uh, first one is scalability and second is like uh, that is uh, a capex model the data center and here we have to just pay for what we use and third thing third thing is latency also because uh, with AWS or Azure or any public cloud, we can just uh, manage local cache, which will uh, further our speed. Okay, a lot of things. Okay, and what Satish is saying, Satish is saying some few points here. Availability, fast and scalability. Okay, so let's see what this 900 document says. The first point, what they are saying, uh, when, you are, when you are trying to understand the concepts of Azure fundamentals or something, related to same scenario what we're dis discussing the one only thing is you have an existing business you're not uh, discovering something new you are not adapting anything new you have a business the company is 30 years old still you're looking for cloud right in that case what what their front-end selling features are what you people said most of the same high availability scalability elasticity Agility, fault tolerance, and DR. <coughs> will not will not touch upon uh, each and every basic terminology now. But when you are testing the things, we'll try to understand most of these components in detail. When I say high availability, okay. So what is the high availability for this data center? In traditional way, the customer might have another data center same country and they might have some sort of set connectivity primary secondary if something goes wrong with this your services will flip or fail over to here and you people are start accessing those services via different channel and that too you have another vpn tunnel okay this is traditional high availability now, what is the replacement component of your data center in Azure? What is what is the what is the technical terminology that that represents your traditional data center in Azure is region. Do you agree with it? Yep. When I say region, okay, this is this is a simple data center again managed by Microsoft or contracted third party. Right? You never know. If a business is 
not that much profitable they don't want to maintain the people they can give the site for the third party to maintain and they will put the board at front microsoft okay so that's that's uh, more of their logistics things and stuff but when it when it comes when it comes to technical stuff the technical replacement of your traditional data center in azure you call it as region right so the region might be azure regions that means azure has data centers across the globe i don't know why this is too much slow yeah okay 58 regions across the globe and services are available across 140 countries that's what they mentioned the front page so if i if, I, if you look at each each blue circle represents one of the region where their data centers are up and running and the dotted ones announced regions means they are still working with the countries or still building with the uh, building the things or getting the things ready to spin up new data centers you call it as regions in those in those respective areas and there is a, some other component called availability zones what it is if you look at some of the regions have diamond inside and some of the regions were simply the mentioned in blue color you understand that the difference between is region and availability zone what it is Hmm. Anyone? No? No. So if I say about if I say something about region, region means one data center blindly. But in some of the cases, in some of the cases there is a small diamond mentioned inside and they are saying availability zones okay availability zones means region is again the physical entity physical location that's it so within that region within that region if i say availability zone within that region they will have three buildings means in the same city they might be on a adjacent street or on a three different directions across the corners but they will have three different buildings okay the reason behind three three different buildings is okay you call it as zone one zone two zone three that's a standard standard offering from azure if there is a diamond inside the region that means that particular region is containing three different buildings three different data centers or three three different physical locations within the same city region is one single geographic location let's say east us okay and east us has three different buildings in in that same city you have every service hosted every service hosted on one zone on a back end it has internal adequate bandwidth connectivity within the other to the other building and it can easily replicate the resources onto other zone this is why this is required for ha that's what first point that they what they portrayed here right high availability for that in in most of the most of the cases if you are talking about high availability within the region then you should adopt this availability zone concept okay if you look at the picture you have some of those regions but if you look at only a few of them are offering with the availability zones any specific reason any specific reason or any idea so wild guess is in mumbai in mumbai west india is mumbai central india is pune south india is chennai 
okay in mumbai if you imagine how many customers that azure so far grabbed across the india and in pune how much business that they are doing to maintain three different buildings in pune if the business is 10 percent expenditure is two times of your profitable thing or some, just just a lemon example if you are not making expected business or ma not making expected business out of your investment what is the reason behind spending so much of capex on a microsoft side to build three different buildings to provide availability zones within the region if the customer sub customer base is really less okay that is that is one one simple understanding so if you look at couple of couple of regions they equipped, they equipped with three different buildings means those regions are making out of more revenue and if you compare with any other any other regions and most of the most of the customers have their own hosted services at least in some of those regions okay you have a data sovereignty in place what i say data sovereignty gdpr okay in that case you cannot really put your data outside norway you have a two locations in norway but in one region there is only one building and you have hosted some service okay then what is the high availability concept for that any idea when i say you have a three different buildings each has a backend connectivity if one entire building goes bad you can easily recover our services within a defined time time frame or a sla agreement what we have between so the services will up and running very quickly then you can see your business is restored after some time but if there is only one region that means only one building and what is the point of high availability any idea yes services will fail over uh, across the regions uh, okay in that case you need to have one more region and you need to deploy some other service primary secondary but geographically both are a, both are in a different location and the adequate bandwidth between these locations is limited during that time your service failover may take some time your ha ha time duration is little high let's say here the failover time is two minutes it might be five minutes or ten minutes here but you can achieve it but the time duration is data syncing on the amount of data that you're replicating across the regions will take little longer than what you expect in availability zones because availability of zones have back end fiber connectivity dark fiber connectivity back end fiber connectivity or a back end uh, what we call it as technically uh, azure backbone you will use to replicate the data between the buildings okay and what about what about another term scalability scalability is more of virtual virtual environment you can spin up the machines rapidly less than uh, five minutes of five minutes of time right so you can scale whenever you require you need a more workloads to be spinned up to serve your customers it's more of more of straightforward and elasticity means what is scalability and what is elasticity elasticity there are two terms vertical scaling and horizontal scaling okay we'll discuss this more in detail in virtual machine scale sets vm scale sets okay there's a concept called virtual machine scale sets in azure and there's another concept called uh, virtual machine as in aws and i'll forget the term okay there's another concept in aws okay that also supports 
vertical scaling and horizontal scaling both that we'll discuss during that time and agility you, you can be more agile you can bring your services very rapidly okay if you look at the development platforms okay you have some dotnet project which is going on since last two years and customer suddenly brought a new project into picture which is purely developed on go if you have a professional skill sets available you can simply spin up your services very rapidly in azure and your systems are up and running you just have to adopt and use it okay your people must be more agile but systems are more agile here they are already available it's it's just a few mouse clicks okay you can deploy resources very quickly and you can spin up your services very rapidly if you are more agile and your business is more agile fault tolerance Fault tolerance means what is the difference between high availability and fault tolerance in VMware? If someone is experienced in VMware, what is the difference between these two? HA and FT. Any idea? Anyone has a VMware prior experience? or Ranjit Singh Sarjit. No? in VMware in VMware there are two different distinguished concepts if you understand these two clearly the, the same thing is applicable in any public cloud platform high availability means it is not zero downtime first of all please remember okay it is not zero downtime availability means try as much as you can okay if a service is running there is some faulty okay service is down okay let's try to bring that up very quickly that is what it means okay then what about fault tolerance if there is any service which is up and running something goes wrong with the backend infra or backend service okay fine but how you will sustain from that problem will be defined by fault tolerance. How you can tolerate those faults? That is different. Okay. In general, if you want to, if you want to design your application more in terms of fault tolerance in VMware, what we will do, I will take two different hosts, physical host, and if a customer is asking to host SQL, always always on cluster SQL always on cluster so what I will do I will deploy primary and secondary two virtual machines and I will configure them as always on always on cluster on top of it okay and what I will do I'll I'll put some anti affinity rule anti affinity rule means these two machines must be maintained always on a different host if do these two virtual machines came together on the same host customer purchased two machines for one application because he need high availability but you brought all both the machines onto the same host and if a host goes down primary is gone secondary is gone what is the point of your discussion high availability you can set some of those rules over here at a granular level similarly when you are designing things in azure you have to follow the certain standards to achieve high availability and sustain with faults when i say sustain with faults one of the example is you have only one region this example you have only one region with one availability zone means only one building and you want to host one application web application running with two websites actually one one server is fine one server is fine you are running one some website with two web servers okay 
you hosted both the virtual machines in this region you're thinking that i have a two machines and i have placed one load balancer at front and the website is running but you never know on the back end whatever the hardware that azure is providing and whatever the logic that azure is following the core business logic because you don't have any control on the logic right it will take both the request and it will go and deploy both the machines on the same hardware then what is the point of the fault tolerance if a hardware is failed then there is a single point of failure in the picture how you will avoid that because this hardware is unknown to you this is always unknown territory you never touch those but how you will design your application considering those things okay there are some fault tolerance concepts that we will discuss in availability sets okay virtual virtual machine scale sets this is scalability and availability sets for high availability and fault tolerance and disaster recovery disaster recovery can be achieved let me go back to the slide how you will plan your business continuity and disaster recovery plan for any customer let's say you have one traditional customer those running take the same previous example you have office in india and you have two side to side tunnels and these two are having back end connectivity primary and secondary in secondary you don't have actual replica you just have offline data means means it's a cold dr you know what is cold dr and hot dr and warm dr three different terms called hot warm and cold dr terminologies at least remove the warm hot and cold okay in when it, when it comes to disaster recovery you take any any of the business area when it comes to it irrespective of what business that you are doing these terminologies are applicable when i say hot dr means you have one server this is primary there will be a second server which is always up and running and both are in in sync this is for disaster recovery your customer will come and access the services on primary only if primary goes down part of the disaster recovery he will go and access the secondary okay this is more of hot dr strategy when i say cold dr strategy when i say cold dr strategy you have a primary all the servers are running here and there is something called backup solution here which can take a backup of your primary data center equipment or environment or business or servers or services what you call it as and it will leisurely replicate and dump into secondary okay in primary you are paying let's say every month $20000 for your data center in your secondary you will just pay $1000 for your data center because you are not hosting anything you simply dumping your data and if something goes wrong you take a servers on rent and do the manual restore then your services will up and run you can access it from dr site is more of offline dr or cold dr in that case what happens you don't maintain extra infrastructure but if you look at the things you want to get rid of this entire setup why you are maintaining the secondary this firewall this everything the secondary setup and this cost and all what you can do you can take advantage of azure that will act as your dr site instead of the secondary data center you shut down and you point your backup solution to put your secondary copy into azure this is your dr considering to this dr this is more cost efficient if you look at on paper and also 
also when the when the dr is required when the primary goes down you want to restore your services in azure it is like more quicker than what you are doing here so you can simply spin your virtual machines and you can always establish a secure connectivity from your respective location so it will be like primary right in in, in these cases this you call it as hybrid design another technical terminology also you are using your azure services only for dr not for production your production is always on your own data center and what you did you have removed the unwanted secondary capex where where your services are running on the secondary data center you are paying more more of unnecessarily and you can utilize dr services provided by azure that comes under universal recovery any 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 questions up to this okay that's few things what we discussed so far and let's move on understand the principles of economic of scale means okay so let's scratch it out take a simple example you have a startup you got a budget and you have a two business ideas and your your economics won't support to implement both the startup business ideas you implement one and deploy some services in azure get some profit and implement a second and scale according to your economic scale is that possible okay in in traditional way irrespective of what business that you want to make it you have to bring your infra in house then later on you think about implementing your business ideas if you have an idea if you want to implement at least you should purchase something and keep it ready then only you can do something but here you no need to do any upfront investments okay according to your economics your financial goals and your profits and revenues you can scale your business in azure and capex opex is more of everyone knows nowadays i think i don't need to spend more time if you guys need i can i can explain in very quick overview you guys still need it or else i can skip this uh, can you uh, quickly give a description, please? Okay. So, capital expenditure and operational expenditure. How that works? In traditional data center, okay, we have some services running on Windows 2008 nowadays. It is almost like 12 years old legacy platform and it is already end of life from last year the plan is these servers are running on some of the physical aspects physical servers and these also almost like seven years old earlier you have a legacy hardware in 2003 you upgraded them used it for a few years again you upgraded them and now using in 2008 now time has came to shut down these physical servers and do some replacement project if you want to do this what options you have so obviously you have to allocate some amount on your budget to purchase new servers and bring the service over here and upgrade upgrade to 2019 and start using it traditional way here you need to purchase the server that default comes with three years warranty and three years extended warranty if you are a premium customer one more year extended warranty that means you can use the services till 2017 but you have to make an investment today leave about who, who will lie who will die till 2017 but you have to make an investment today that is your capex And you brought the server you need staff to install configure manage and operate that is your operational expenditure opex means your ac 
power network employee salary all these things comes under your monthly operational income or operational expenditure sorry not income right you want to get rid of this model and simply start deploying one virtual machine and take some tool if it is a critical machine if it is a non critical machine do offline migration to azure you are not paying for your capex this is this is saved okay and your operational expenditure you have xyz amount plus 10% happy whatever the expenditure that I have in capex plus 10% you have to spend here I am happy because I am saving 90% here right so with this capex opex model you can spin up your services very rapidly and integrate with your existing business using some secure channels how to do that more of technical in terms of financial standpoint what you are trying to achieve it these are the few things clear on capex opex yep, thank you understand the consumption based model okay i have i need eight servers today pay for eight servers tomorrow morning i need 11 create three more and start paying for three more for tomorrow onwards when you need it you create it when you don't need it destroy it consumption model hourly based and you know some of the components are per second based billing in azure in aws you don't have such concept per second based billing but in azure you have per second based billing available in most of the platform as a service components if your database you used your your database transactions are used for 15 seconds you will see 15 seconds billing for that particular database component you have a control more granular level when it comes to some of the components but it's hard to understand how they will calculate a billing per second base okay a bit high level I don't spend any more time on this we already discussed yesterday and everyone is know nowadays what is platform as a service what is software as a service and what is infrastructure as a service these three things anyway we spend a lot of time and next 40 days we'll spend deploying these components on day to day i will again explain during the deployment whether that component belongs to infrastructure as a service or platform as a service clear also also some of the cloud cloud models public cloud as you already know aws azure gcp private cloud private cloud means you don't want to upload your data in their region okay you have a big infrastructure and you have adopted azure so what you what you can do you can ask azure people to come and deploy their azure stack here you give them the infra give them the infra and you have on premise and they will come and deploy some of the cloud services here okay that can integrate with your further designated azure region this you call it as hybrid connection and private cloud openstack and all you can use your own cloud deployment cloud deployment model or even your v cloud we will also consider as your private cloud hybrid you can ask azure to come and deploy their services their software on your hardware or they will come with along with the solution if you want if that is a profitable business for both the parties you can use hybrid okay and we discussed about regions and availability zones so far right what we discussed today regions and availability zones right when i say regions global infrastructure sorry, 
slow man it's okay just a moment yeah azure geographies let's say regions these are the regions and there services are also if i say locations region is physical location right if i say east us it is actually physically located in virginia if i say asia and india pune west mumbai and south chennai three right so far we discussed these two tomorrow what we will do is we'll try to understand Azure resources and we will not do any of these components because we are going to discuss in detail about the components and stuff again in when you are deploying these things individually so we don't spend any time on these component terminologies especially so we'll understand these two components tomorrow okay then we'll go ahead with the Infrastructure as a service labs. Clear? Are any questions up to this? Anyone? Rajesh? No, all good. Rajesh? You are not audible, man. Sing Satish, any other questions? Yeah. All right, so I'll stop here today. Okay, what we can do tomorrow if you have any questions, you can ask for a few more minutes. Okay, or else, what we can do, we can catch up tomorrow and we can start discussing about other terminologies. And tomorrow we'll discuss about the account creation, subscriptions, and building, how you can set up your own building and stuff. Then day after tomorrow onwards, we'll start with the labs. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, one, one question, um, uh, Srinivas. Yeah. So, uh, so you're suggesting us not to take up the AZ900 or 103 exam, but after say 40, we can we should yeah. the certification of a little one right right yeah what i did is yeah what i did is, i i'll get the url i don't know how to find it now but i'll get the url i directly gave 301 oh okay 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 now 300 become three 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 zero three what i did i directly gave 301 exam Okay, uh, so, so you, you you didn't give the the fundamentals or the system admin, right? Not needed. Yeah, if you already if you already know even nine hundred, no one no one will consider that as a certification nowadays. Oh. And Sai, uh, we we are about to drop off when you just connected late. Hello. You dropped off. Then I'll stop here. Then we can catch up tomorrow. And uh, for tomorrow is more of uh, Azure specific discussion. Will not will not deviate into any other uh, traditional or AWS way. We will will strictly look into Azure things from tomorrow onwards. Okay. Yeah. Let me stop here.